in this differential equation and told that the output of interest is Z. Uh, we take the differential equation and we put all of the higher order, um, the highest order Z on the left and we bring all the input derivatives, which in this case is U double dot and U dot, to the left side of the equation and put the remaining uh, items on the right side of the equal sign. Uh, then we look at this and we say I have 68U coming in and then uh, you say everything else is what you start with. You put it through an integral and you'll have uh, that z double dot minus 2u dot minus 10u dot becomes z dot minus 2u minus 10u. Uh, add a summer and cancel out that 10u. You can always eliminate just the input variable u. That leaves you with uh, z dot minus 2u dot, which you put through an integral again, and that leaves you with z minus 2u. Again, add a summer to eliminate the u, and you're left with z. All right, at that point, you have this. And so we can uh, identify that after each integrand is our state variable. This is x1, and there's your x2. Um, we can easily identify that x1 is z minus 2u, which we can see here. Uh, but your x1 dot is z dot minus 2u dot. And your x2 is z dot minus 2u plus 2. And the way that that plus 2 got in there is you need to make your... Uh, x2 dot, you can't have it in terms of your uh, input derivative. So you need your x2 dot to equal that, which is in terms of everything else. So I need a uh, minus 6z dot. Well over here my x1 dot is a z dot minus 2u dot. So if I pull that out, multiply it by negative 6, now I've got 6z dot, but I also pull the plus 12u dot in there. So I have to carry that up. Now I've got that plus 12u dot minus 10u dot from the original equation. Uh, sum them together, I'm left with 2u dot. Um, after that goes through the integral, now I've got a plus 2u, and my summer changes to negative 2u to cancel it out, and now I'm back to normal. I, I need a 34z. There's a z there, so I pull it down, negative 34 multiplier, but that also puts a 68u in there, but since it's just in terms of u, I don't have to worry myself about it. All right, so looking at it here, I've got z minus 2u. The uh, derivative of that is x1 dot equals z dot minus 2u. There's my uh, z dot minus 2u dot, which I can say is, since x2 is z dot minus 2u dot plus 2u, accounting for the cancellation there um, from the bootstrapping, I can say that it's x2 minus 2u will give me that. I can also say for my x2 dot, I need it to be equal to the entry formula right there, which is in terms of the non-derivative input. So I have the neg uh, plus 68u as shown here. I need the uh, 6z dot, but I'm going to put that in terms of my x2. To get a z dot, I just need that uh, x1 dot in terms of x2, because it can't have it in terms of input anything, um, or I mean derivatives. So you've got minus 6 x2 minus 2u. And then I need uh, negative 34 z. But for a z, I can use my x1, but if I add 2u, that leaves me with just z. So I've effectively got the same thing here and here, just in terms of uh, x's and u's instead of derivatives. So you expand and simplify, you're left with this. You take the coefficients, just using regular linear algebra, that gives you your matrix, your x dot matrix equals, this is your a matrix, your x, and then your b matrix with your input. And uh, it's key that no input derivatives or uh, state variable derivatives can be in the yeah. formulas here. And then your output of interest, y, is given as z. But if you look at your x1, it's z minus 2u. So if you add 2u, you, you're left with z. So your c matrix becomes 1 for the x1 there, and 2 there for your d matrix. That's how you do bootstrapping to find a state variable matrix and uh, get the output of interest.